Now I'm going to talk about OAuth3 identity strategies. Again, one of the purposes of OAuth3 is to solve the pick two of three problem. So you can have peer-to-peer -peer privacy or pseudonymity, which some people mistakenly term as anonymity, but you can't have all three at one time. So you pick two of three. So you'll notice there's three edges to this triangle representing the three possible strategies that you can have in order to achieve the desired result. So here we outline the subject strategy, the PPID strategy, and the opaque ID strategy. Now, the next thing I want to do is tell you about the different parties that are involved in a transaction. First, we have the subject. The subject I'm going to draw as a person, um, and it is the ethereal concept of I am me, right? And it's usually represented by a device that I own, like my computer is me, like it's a physical extension of me, but my computer is digital so it can handle tokens and such, whereas I am physical and I cannot handle tokens and such. So that is the, the subject. But everything that we're talking about is about the subject because the subject is what wants either to be peer-to-peer -peer or to be private or to be pseudonymous. Um, you know, so it's really about meeting the subject's goals. Now, the other entity, which I'm going to represent kind of looking like a server here, which that doesn't look like a server, but bear with me. This is the issuer. Now, the issuer is responsible for validating tokens, not necessarily issuing. So it's kind of a misnomer because this terminology was created um, with the idea that the issuer would be generating the, the token, but that's, that's not necessary. Um, and that's not the way that it's required in OAuth 3. We also have the authorized party, which is abbreviated AZP. And I'm gonna represent this as like a web browser looking thing. So this is like an application on a device. So if it's a web page, music.com or like spotify.com, it represents an application that's been downloaded in the page and is acting uh, on behalf of the subject, more or less. It's, uh, it's, it's a capability that uh, the subject has, a capability of interacting with music assets or a capability of interacting with scheduled assets on a calendar or whatever, right? Um, and then we have the, the audience as it's called, meaning that it, it, it's called audience because it's what receives the token. Uh, but the reason that it receives the token is because it has the stuff. So either the service, like the alarm clock that's going to go off that needs to notify something else, like, um, or the more traditionally the data. So the music files, the video files, etc. Now, in the, in the subject strategy, in all these strategies, you, you, you don't have to have these four separate. In some cases, you really don't want to. And so in all of these strategies, you can kind of um, consolidate, either because you have to or because it's convenient, um, some of this into, you know, like, for example, the example of Facebook. Facebook is an issuer and an audience. Um, there are other things like Spotify is an authorized party and an audience. Um, and so you, you get different pairings depending on what your, your beliefs about that pick two or three triangle are that you're trying to accomplish either technically as a company or as an individual. Um, but again, the purpose of all three is that it allows this, this working to happen um, with, you know, I as a person can choose more, you as a company can choose more, and we can have this mutual agreement where we all get kind of what we want. So anyway, uh, back to this, the subject, what you're giving up obviously is pseudonymity, right? Um, well, I shouldn't say obviously because we haven't talked about it yet. Pseudonym, 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 dang it, can't spell, pseudonymity, can't even speak. Um, because in, in the subject strategy, you don't really need an issuer. The issuer and the subject can kind of be combined, meaning that your operating system is issuing tokens or uh, your, your browser or, you know, something, you have an app that is specifically the issuer app somehow on your device that's an extension of you. That is totally possible. And what you end up doing is you generate the token, right? And we, we I mean, in all three, there's a lot of client side stuff. So like your device can generate the token for a lot of things, even when it's uh, like it, it, some of the stuff is a sliding scale. Anyway, 
But you're giving your true identity, say your true identity is one, two, three, you're giving your true identity to music.com or spotify.com, right? Or you're giving your true identity to say um, twitter.com. And the, the thing here is that if you, it, pseudonymity is great if you don't want to be tracked and traced, right? So you could have these two websites could make a partnership and then they could corroborate their databases and because you're issuing the same ID to everything, everything on the web, no, I mean, your ID is public. It's like your name, you know, like it's, it's public information and anybody can corroborate things about you because it's, it's information that you just make public. Um, and so that's why this one is, is on the internet and particularly not like the best strategy, but it is very peer to peer and that's wonderful. Um, and for trusted parties, you could even have an authorized party and an audience talk to each other. Um, so, you know, you could have this app that's music.com that uses, uh, this all storage.com maybe is where you actually keep your files and, and they can communicate to each other with your token. Cause you can, you very easily issue your token to allow that audience for this authorized party. And you know, it's great. Okay. So that is the subject. Uh, one. Now the next one, pseudonymous pairwise identifier means that you're pairing between the authorized party or the audience and the subject to create the ID that gets used. So if my true ID is one, two, three, so, so if I'm one, two, three over here, then I have an X, Y, Z over here. So every time I speak with music.com, I communicate as though I am X, Y, Z. Um, and, and then every time I talk to videos.com, then I will communicate as though I am JKL. So my real identity is one, two, three. I tell this guy I'm X, Y, Z. I tell this guy I'm JKL. If they talk to each other, they can't corroborate. Um, but what happens is that in this strategy, what we give up is a little bit of privacy. It's not very advantageous to have the authorized party and the audience apart. So the audience tends to fall into the authorized party, which means that I'm losing some privacy. I'm losing the ability to store my stuff wherever I want, right? So it's the case of Spotify. Like I log in with Facebook, which I might not give away any of my identity and Facebook does support PPIDs. That's how it works. Um, so, you know, Facebook can't corroborate with some other, uh, I mean, Spotify can't corroborate with some other site that I've logged in through Facebook and discover my identity, right? So, but, Spotify has all the music. Like I don't have it. It's not on my computer. It's not a place where I chose to get it. The application runs and it's tightly coupled with the data. So the AZP and the audience kind of go together. And that's the downside of the PPID strategy. Now, of course you could have the AZP and the audience be stripped back apart, but then you need the, to have the AZP and the audience communicate with one another. In which case, you know, you issued one PPID over here, XYZ, and another over here, JKL. Well, now they can't know who you are to be able to effectively provide the right resources and capabilities, which defeats the purpose. Or you're going to be telling anytime you want two to communicate to each other, you're going to be telling them all of your PPIDs for all of the things that they need to communicate with, which defeats the whole purpose of the pseudonymity in the first place. So that's what you end up giving up in this strategy. Um, and then uh, when we talk about opaque ID, what you give up is the ability to do peer to peer. That's not writing very well. So let me get rid of this and that and that and start over. So in this one, you really do need the issuer to be separate. You need it to be its own entity. And there, there are ways that it can still be done client side. So you, you technically could still do it P2P but you have like this third round hop where you got to do weird stuff with iframes. Like it can be implemented, but it's a little tricksy and it's not, not very useful. I mean, it's just, ugh. okay. So let me get to this. Now, the nice thing about opaque ID is you can separate all the parties and you have your pseudonymity, right? Um, but what happens is when I get my identity from the issuer, my true identity is one, two, three, but only the issuer knows that. So um, the issuer knows that my true identity is one, two, three. It gives me a token that is RND, that's for random. And then I give that token over to AZP and AZP now has to do an exchange with issuer to discover that 
R and D for this session actually represents X, Y, Z. Now the benefit is that the AZP can now also use that token with the audience without disclosing my identity because it's just a session identifier, R and D. And then the audience can contact the issuer and discover that I am in fact JKL. So the only relationship that this thing knows is that for the session, XYZ is R&D, the AZP knows that, and the audience knows that JKL is R&D, but the audience doesn't know what I'm described as on the authorized party. But you can see it's no longer a peer-to-peer -peer model where it's very quick and efficient. There's a little bit of excess here because it has to do this round trip through the issuer in order to exchange the opaque ID token for a PPID token. Um, now, in, uh, in, in practice, the PPID is always going to be referenced as a subject, and when there's an opaque ID, no subject is going to be present. It's going to be represented as an ATI and, or a, J, a JTI must be exchanged. Um, so that is, those, are, those are the three identity strategies, and again, OAuth3 is designed to give choice so that it solves problems in a way that parties can mutually agree upon what works best for the various parties involved and the efficiency or the pseudonymity or um, privacy and, and separation of concerns that the user or the system wants.